If you want to improve your editing skills within Keenmaster, keep watching. I'm going to be sharing with you guys 10 advanced editing tips that when you implement, it's going to make your YouTube videos look a lot more professional. Now on this channel, we help creators like you make professional looking YouTube videos on nothing but your smartphone. So if you want to learn how to make videos on your smartphone for YouTube, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Now, I'll be doing this tutorial from my iPad, but don't worry, Android users or iPhone users, the same tips will apply to your version of Keenmaster. So let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right into these 10 tips. Advanced editing tip number one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create social media logos with PNG photos. You know, if you want to show your Instagram, you could have it appear right there. I'll show you how to do that within Keenmaster. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go onto your web browser and type in Instagram PNG. We're going to want to get our social media logo downloaded onto our phone. So basically what a PNG photo is, is if we click on one of these, notice how the background turns to those gray and white squares. That means it's a PNG photo. So if we save this to our camera roll and then go over to Keenmaster, and then what we're going to do is click layer. We're going to click add media and then we're going to go to that Instagram photo. Watch what happens when we import it into our timeline. So I'm going to click on it. It doesn't have a background. There's no white background. There's no black background. It doesn't have a background. And then what I can do is I'm going to actually make this smaller, move it over to the side here. I'm going to add an in animation of fade as well as in out animation of fade. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to layers again, add text. And this is where we're going to type in our Instagram username. There we go. I got that there. Now I'm going to place it here for right now. In animation, I'm going to choose fade. And then nope, uh, out animation, I'm also going to choose fade. Check. And then what I'm going to do is scroll over and make sure my text isn't over the top of our Instagram logo. So I might make that a little bigger. I may change the font to something more bold. I'm also going to go over to shadow and add a black shadow because a lot of times that just makes it look a lot nicer. So I'm just going to do that. There we go. And now when we click play on this, you'll see our Instagram flash and then it will disappear. And there you go. Now you have your social media logo added or whatever else you want to add, whether that's Facebook or Twitter or whatnot, you can add it to your video. Tip number two is to trim faster using the presets. And what I mean by that is when I click on this video here, I could grab the end of a clip and drag it with my finger to trim it, but that's not the most effective way to trim a clip. What's more effective is to move your playhead or basically the red line here. Just line it up to wherever you want to trim it. Click on the video, click trim and split, and then just click trim to left of playhead and poof, it's trimmed right up to that spot where you want it to. And you could do the same with the right side. You can line it right up to where you want it to cut, click trim to right of playhead, and there you go. It is cut to that spot. So when trimming your videos, don't use your finger to kind of trim the clip. Go into the settings on the video and use those trim preset buttons. It's going to speed up your editing. Editing tip number three is to use the pan and zoom feature. Now, a lot of times there may be a long length of video where you're talking and there's just not a lot going on. So that's where it's useful to use the pan and zoom feature. So for this clip, I talk for a bit. So what I'm going to do is click on it. I'm going to click on pan and zoom. And what this is going to do is between the starting position, which is the beginning of the clip, and the ending position, which is the end of a clip, I can control how much it zooms in. So if I click on the end here and I zoom in with my finger on the preview screen on my face here and then click check, when we click this video and click play, it's going to slowly zoom in on my face. Now, if I wanted to get silly with it, I could click on the video and split it. And then on here, I could zoom in really far and click check. And now it's going to zoom super fast all the way to the end of where I splitted it. 
So you, there's a lot of different ways you could use this effect to make just a long part where you're talking a little more interesting or to do kind of a fun type meme video where you're zooming in really close on someone's face and whatnot. And while we're on the topic of zooming in, let me tell you about another zooming in tip that can help your videos. So sometimes YouTubers do this zoom in on their face and then it zooms right back out, just kind of what I showed you there. And it's something that really breaks up the video and can make talking videos a little more interesting with a bunch of different angles. So let me show you how I'm doing this right now where it's zooming in and out within Keen Master. It's really, really easy to do. So what you're gonna do is go to the part where you're gonna wanna zoom in, click on the video, and then click trim slash split. Split at playhead, which is just gonna cut the video in half and make two different clips. I'm going to scroll to the part where I want it to zoom back out, click on the video, trim and split, split at play he playhead to make another set of clips. So now we have three clips after splitting. And what I'm going to do is just click on that middle one. I'm going to click pan and zoom. Make sure this equal button is clicked on so it's not going to move the pan and zoom. Put it right there wherever I want it. Click the check mark. And now, when we click play, now this free I'm talking, it's going to zoom in for a little bit, until I was just and then it's going to zoom right back out. So you can have that little break within your videos, and it's just going to make it look a whole lot better and make it more interesting when you're doing talking videos. Tip number five is to adjust the color correction. So you can actually do some color grading features within King Master if you click on the video and scroll down to adjustments, you can actually control how your video looks and apply basically some different effects by moving these settings around. And what that can really allow you to do is change how your video looks and you know give it a more professional looking style. So you can warm it up, you can cool it down, you can you know brighten the highlights or lower them. You can brighten up the shadows if it's a little too dark. You have so much, you have quite a bit of control here within Kane Master. So go through this when you're editing your videos. So that way you can make sure it looks its best, either make it more colorful, brighten the shadows. If something's too bright, you can decrease the highlights. You have all this control in there. So that way you can make sure your videos look perfect. And actually, while we're in here editing this, tip number six is this apply to all button. So let's say you've brightened up one video, but you have all these other videos in the same location that you've edited, and you want the same effects to be applied to all the videos. You can click this apply to all, and it'll actually apply the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, anything you did in here, you can apply it to all the rest of the videos. So that way you don't have to click on each one and make those adjustments. Tip number seven, I'm gonna be showing you how to apply keyframes to your video. So for this example, to demonstrate it, what we're gonna do is click on layers, effects, basic effects, and we're going to do the mo mosaic blur. So if you were to blur someone's face, you would need to apply this effect. So I'm just going to first line it up over my face here as if I'm someone who needs to be blurred. I'm going to go into the settings and affect it, make it really blurry there. There we go. And now this is what keyframes is going to allow us to do. So we're going to click on that effect. On the far left, we're going to click on that key button. And what this is going to allow us to do is move it with our character so that way we can keep them blurred. So I'm going to click plus right at the beginning. So there we go. Added. Scroll just a little bit over. Move the blur on the screen and click the... And it's going to automatically add the plus. So what we have to do then is scroll through. Just make sure it stays lined up. Just keep moving it very little by little. And what this is going to do is, as we move it little by little here, you'll see on that timeline those little dots. Those are keyframe points. So what that's going to allow you to do is, as this video is playing, it's going to track where you moved it through each of these points. So we're just going to go through real quick and follow my head. 
This isn't a perfect keyframe, but I'm doing it kind of quick just to show you guys. There we go. And now if we go to the beginning and click play, you'll see that blur follows my head because of keyframes. I just tracked wherever the head was going to go and now it will follow wherever my head is. Now the cool thing is you can actually apply this to text, to photos, to cause text to fly onto the screen or move out, to move stickers around, etc. You can do all that with keyframes. It's really fun. You should definitely explore with it, try a few things. It's a super cool tool built into Keenmaster. Tip number eight, I'm going to be showing you how to add black bars to make cinematic looking video. So if you remember when we were doing the social media logos, we're going to do something similar. We're going to go back onto our web browser and what we're going to do is type in black bars PNG. So we get a PNG photo with those gray and white squares. So we can click on one. I want to make sure it has the, there we go, gray and white squares. So we know this is a real photo. And then what we're going to do is go to our layers, we're going to add media, and then we're going to go to the black bars. Then just click on your photo and you'll notice it has those black bars. Then we're just going to resize it to cover the full screen. And there we go. Now we have the cinematic bars over our video. Tip number nine is to add music to your videos using a screen recorder. Now, some phones have them already built into their device. Otherwise, if you're on iOS, you can download Go Record, or if you're on Android, you can download AZ Screen Recorder to record your screen. And then what you can do is you can hop over to YouTube and then type in any song you want, or maybe you need to search copyright free music. And then with the screen recording the music, you can then have that music file on your library. And then what you can do is go into Keen Master. You can import the media of the music you want, or even just anything where you just want the background noise to be playing over your video. So for this example, I'm just going to click on this video and add it to the timeline. And then what we can do is click on the video, scroll down and click extract audio. And what this is going to do is separate our audio from the video. So when you screen recorded the song you want, you can then extract the audio and then just delete the old clip. And the sound is still there that you recorded off of YouTube for the music and you can have it playing over your video. So just find a song you want on YouTube, screen record it and click play, watch the video through till the end so you have the whole song screen recorded, import that screen recorded clip into your timeline, detach the audio, and then delete the clip and you have the music in your timeline. And finally, tip number 10 is to improve your filmmaking skills. Now you can always, you know, try and do your best with editing and make it professional, but it does help to know how to film on your smartphone correctly so you get the most professional results. Uh, I did a playlist over here and have made a whole bunch of videos to help you make more professional looking videos on nothing but your smartphone. So if you want to learn more about creating content on your smartphone, you can click on the playlist over here and start learning how to make more professional videos. So I'll see you guys over there and thanks for watching this video.